This is Murphy Models Class 141 with a sugar tube and a mega bass speaker. Sounds awesome. Let's see how to do it. Hey everyone, and welcome to another how-to video. Today we are going to take this lovely Murphy Models Class 141 and we are going to fit a sound chip but also double speakers and you get amazing sound out of this when it has the double speakers fitted. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a lock sound, as you can see here, a sound chip and it has a sugar cube speaker and I also have an extra mega bass speaker here and we're going to fit both of these and we're going to beef up the sugar cube, make it a bit more bassy as well. To get started here's everything you're going to need, um, so obviously you have your local, um, your two speakers and these are just big enough by the way. Uh, we have to do some modifications to the logo to the local to make it fit um, because it has as you can see a very narrow shell and very uh, very little vertical space there's only about 13 millimeters of vertical space so we have to do a little bit of modification to the local uh, to make these fit you have your speakers your sugar cube your uh, dcc chip and your other speaker you have all your normal soldering stuff so your soldering iron and you know cleaner and solder and flux uh, grab some black tape and some masking tape you need your wire cutters. You need this is the frame for the sugar cube. So you can see it has you glue these little bits together on the back of the sugar cube to give it that base sound. Um, so usually you get three or you get four sizes. Sorry, you get three sizes and a base. Um, so we'll be gluing those first. Some black tack. This is really really sticky black tack. Um, it sticks stuff in place. It's really handy for holding the speakers in place, and it doesn't lose its kind of stickiness like blue tack. Um, if you can. Get this, you know, blue tack or whatever you can use, but black tack is really handy. You will need a little file. You can pick them up in any hardware shop. Uh, what's this guy? Little small screwdriver because we have to take off some bits. Good sharp scalpel. We have to modify, uh, we have to take off one of the plastic lugs as well. Uh, and a good scalpel is good for that. Some heat shrink. Uh, we're going to be doing some wiring. So heat shrink is usually good to get. From the pliers, um, poly cement because we're gluing plastic together. Um, this is the home bra one, if I can focus on it. And we can't. There we go. There, hopefully you got that. And, yeah, lots of light. And some patience. And it's all good. So we get going. First thing we're going to do, so that it's ready when we need it, is put the frame onto our sugar cube speaker. And this just gives it a more bass effect. The thicker you can make it, the bassier it sounds. So we'll cut off the speaker uh, from the chip, probably about there. And we're going to solder them back in anyway, so that's totally fine. What you're looking for is we need the base, and the, you give different thicknesses here. We're looking for the thickest one, so that usually fits quite well. So just break them away from the, the sprue. Okay, and they line up, they have little clips. I'm not sure, it's going to be very fiddly to see that, but they have little grooves and little clips that line up in those grooves. So you just fit them together like that, make sure they fit okay. There we go. Okay, so then run a bead of your, your poly cement around the outside. all the way around. The glue needs to go over the entire surface here because uh, you need to seal it. Basically the glue needs to seal the sound chamber and then that's what traps the sound and gives it that, that base effect. If you don't seal it, uh, the sound, the air can get out and you don't get the sound properly. together. I love the poly cement because it's, you know, a few seconds and you're done. There you go. And now that you have that done, um, the bottom of the sugar cube speaker also has little clips. 
So you can make this up. If you have the space, make it as thick as possible and you'll get better sound. Um, you got to work with whatever space you have available. Same thing again. Put a bead around the outside. There's some tissue attached onto my glue here. Try not to glue it to yourself too much. A little stick like this comes in handy, a matchstick or something like that, just to hold it in place. There we go. And we don't need to glue again, so. Just press it together for a minute or two. So now you can see how much thicker the speaker is. Maybe if I do it there, it'd be better. So there's a big, much bigger sound chamber. Alrighty, that's done. So put that to one side. And if you can put some sort of weight on top of it or something like that, uh, that'd be even better. And we'll just hold it, hold it together. Next thing we're going to do, don't need that anymore, is we are going to open this loco. And I remember the first time I did this, I was terrified. Um, basically, there's a very simple method. Once you know how to do it, it's very simple, as with everything. So you don't need to take off the handrails or anything. You do need to pull them out just from where they're attached. Okay, I use the little snips to do this. Just pull it out and move it down a little bit so it's not stuck in. the four that need to be done. Like that. Then you get your local, go to the cab end that doesn't have the vent in it, so this end here, and you literally just pull it, it comes straight up, a little bit of wiggling to unclip it, hold it down using this part, and just trust that it will work. And bring it straight up. Cab is off. And then just get your fingernail, there's a little gap here with this one. Just get your finger in under that and lever it up. Your fingernail if you have them. Just lever it up like that. And then this end will come up with it. Like so. So there we have it. And now what we have here is, this is a speaker cradle. We don't need that, we're gonna take it off. And there's your blanket chip for your DCC. We leave that on for the moment so we don't damage anything. And you want to watch out for your wires. So grab your little screwdriver. There's two, yeah, there's two screws in this. Um, so just take them out. And you can save all these pieces. I usually, anything I take off a loco, I put in the box that the loco came with or that the uh, chip came with. You can use your normal little screwdrivers if you want. This is a very handy little screwdriver I got from Roads and Rails. And the tip is magnetic. So it's particularly suited to taking the screws out of locals, especially if they're down in a little recess spot or something like that. And we're gonna take that off, and now you can see what I'm talking about. We have two little lugs here, one and two, and then two little holders here. And because of the screw in here, we actually really don't need these. Um, so we're gonna file that and that off, and this one and this one down as much as possible. And the other thing we're gonna take off in this first bit is, you can see inside here, you have a little plastic holder. Uh, we're going to take that off as well. The speaker will be black so you won't really see it through the vent. Um, but that plastic holder gets in the way so there's two little screws in there as well. Let's take them out. And this magnetic tip is just amazing because these screws are tiny and you would lose them very easily. You never know, you might want to put it back on later. There won't be enough space with the speakers to put this back on now, but you might use different speakers in the future or something like that. So keep all these bits. And then you can see the last bit we need to do is one of those lugs, this one here. We need to cut that off and file it off to give us that extra bit of space. This one doesn't matter because it's just a head of the kind of cab bit there. But we're going to take this off as well. Cool. Let's get to work. 
Okay, next bit we're going to do is we're going to be filing away at these lugs and we don't want the metal filings to fall in on top of the motor. So we're going to cover over this area here with masking tape. Um, I like to put a piece sticky side up uh, before we start covering it over, just inside here, uh, over the wires. So it's almost like it's upside down. And that means that any, let's get the tape there, any filings that might accidentally get past our cover of masking tape, um, they should stick to this masking tape as opposed to going into the motor. Um, now, from doing this before, you might get a few little metal filings in there and you can basically just turn the logo upside down and get at it with a paintbrush. But sure, we try and minimize that as much as possible. So this can be a bit finicky. You want to get the masking tape over the wires down the side, there, like that. And then same on the other side. And push it in. There you go. Don't be too forceful with it, but just enough to get it down there. And that's what you end up with. Now you can see any filings that get down there, um, they'll stick to the masking tape. And then we want to mask up the whole area. So I'll just start off one here and I'll probably skip this part of the video. It'll be very boring watching me. And try not to pull up the masking tape you've already put down. that would be a help. That one's too thick, so we'll just do a slimmer piece and I'll show you what I mean. So you want to leave your lugs visible. Obviously, you're going to be filing them. And just stick it down on each side of the metal. There, like that. And then push it back from the lug, lugs if you need to. There we go. So we're going to cover over this whole area. And cover over here as well, over the PCB end of it. And then also put it down here so that the filings don't collect on the logo. Um, so I'm going to keep going with this and then show you when it's done. Okay, so here we are. And you can see we're all masked up. I uh, hope you can see that okay. The light is quite bright here, but that's okay. So you want to basically go around the two lugs here and the two of them up here, maybe a bit down the center. I also put them on the side here because some filings will come and this will help catch them. Um, you'll end up brushing them off anyway, as I said. Um, but you're trying to you're trying to cover all of these holes around the lugs here where you're going to start filing. That's what you're trying to do. And you'll be brushing off the file uh, residue, I suppose, as you go along. So, next step now is requires patience and it's a bit tedious, but don't try and do it too fast or you'll probably break something. You have to remember as well there's wires under here, so you don't want to be lying, don't lie the file on top of the masking tape and start you know, filing away because you'll file away some of the wires. So um, take your time. I find what works well, go at it from, go at each lug separately. Don't try and do two of them at the same time. And then go at it at an angle so you can get the file down a bit further. Uh, otherwise you'll get caught in this one. So when you're filing then, um, as I said, take your time with it. Hold the logo steady. Maybe use two of the lugs to hold up. And just, you know, if you can, the one, usually one side of the file is kind of flat. It's not an actual file. So you can hold that against your nail if you want to to hold it in place and just keep going nice and slowly gently as I said don't try and do it too fast something like that so you can see there it's starting maybe you can see it this one is starting to get shiny and you're finding it away and you need to keep going on it. Um, you, it also helps if you can tilt. Um, so if you can just get something to tilt it up like that, it'll help the file bits fall away. Like that, and it'll give you a better angle on it. So nice and firm pressure, gently back and forth. And then every now and then, uh, maybe get like a paintbrush or something like that and just Flick the bits of file away so you can see what you're doing and then keep going. Um, okay, this is going to take about 20 minutes or so, so we'll pause here and skip ahead in a minute.
Okay, that's the first two done. And if you have a look, see. <coughs> and if you can see them in the light here. So you can see from profile those two logs were there. And they were completely gone. And you can see see the little hole there where it was. So if you can get rid of the ring around it, that means it's nice and flat. And you can see some filings that have built up there. So you just literally just give them a brush off for now and then we'll come back and clean up later. So now we're going to keep going on these two. Now you've got to be very careful with these two because you won't get them flat, probably. Um, the PCB or the circuit board is right there, so you don't want to start filing away the end of that. And then because you're trying to get flat, you're, going to, you're probably going to hit the masking tape here where the wires are as well. So you've got to be very careful around these. You're probably not going to get them flat. You might get them a slant from the steel up to the circuit board, and that's good enough. As long as you get most of them off, you should be fine. So we'll get started with that now. And onto the first one. You can, yeah, put your nail against it if you want. <coughs> um, if you don't mind putting a few marks and scrapes and stuff on your nail. So off we go again. Okay, so that took, what, 20, 25 minutes to do. And you can see, if you look closely here, let's see if I can show you. It's hard with the light reflecting on it because it's so shiny. So one, two, that's where the logs were. And then these other ones were here. You can just see two little kind of white squares. That's where the other previous ones were. So I'm gonna take off, you can see as well what I was saying before all the metal filings down along here okay uh, and it's on the other side as well so you'll get them that's that's okay try and sweep them off before you start taking the masking tape off this is from experience because sometimes the masking tape when you're taking it off it sticks together and then falls into the motor which is never fun so give it a good brush off like that and then gently Gently start peeling off the masking tape. I think I'll probably speed this bit up as well. pulling it as well don't pull it up pull it away from the local just in case it starts catching try and fight the temptation to do this quickly um, just take your time it's expensive all this stuff so a second or two of brushing can cost you a lot of money successful than the last time I did this. So we'll look inside, check your motor. Might be one or two bits. This one is generally okay. I haven't spilled much in there. So let me get a smaller brush. And we're all good. So now Clean down the sides of the local. Brush away from the, the edge. And you're probably going to have little bits of filing all over the place, so give the local a good brush. I can come back and clean more later as well. Try 
not to brush it. There's a couple of holes in the body chassis as well. Try not to brush it down onto the bogies. Yeah, that'll do for now. I'll give it a bit more of a clean layer. Now, that's the first tedious part over. And the second bit is even worse. <laughs> so, the second bit. We're trying to take off. Let's see if you can see it. Yeah. That lug. Okay. Just the near one. You don't need the far one. Just that one. And the way I find it works quite well. You have a few different tools. Um, scalpel is good. Um, if you can get a big I have a huntsman here, sometimes that works well. It's a big pen knife. Um, and the reason it's useful is because the blade is so long that you can lie it flat inside here and um, you won't hit the lug at an angle. Um, again, you can file this as well, but it just takes a lot longer. And what you're trying to do here is very carefully put the tip of the blade just against the lug like that and just saw back, back and forward like that as best you can. You're having a lot of room to work with um, and you want to cut into it and eventually you'll, you won't be able, well you might be able to cut it all the way through but generally if you cut most of the way through um, the lug will just kind of snap off and then you can file away the bit to the end. So you can do it with the scalpel like this. Again be very careful about pressing really hard or anything. You just want to saw back and forth and take your time because um, it's so delicate. And then with the pen knife you can also do the same thing. I have to make it longer. So the pen knife, get it in against the lug and back and forth again, whichever works best for you. Um, I generally stick with the scalpel because it's sharper. So we'll just get going. This probably will take another 10 15 minutes as well. So a lot of time and patience. Once this bit is done though you're laughing because it's then it's just soldering and wiring and stuff. So a bit firm, firm pressure without putting too much on it. Eventually you'll get a little groove and you just keep going back and forth in it. Obviously we'll do one side and then try and do the other side. And you're always careful not to damage the rest of the, the body shop. And turn it around and get the other side. So more fast forward than I'd say on this bit. Okay, here we go now. So let me have a look. Um, let's see, that's the best way to view it. There we go. So you can see there. You can see the original. There's the first lug, and then the second one is almost totally filed away. You're very unlikely to get it really flat uh, without damaging all the rest. So getting it down as close as you can should be fine. Um, as long as it's mostly gone speakers will fit. So um, next step now is we are going to start some soldering. So we can take that out and give it a bit of a clean and stuff if you want. And we'll start doing our soldering. So we'll pop our loco in here. Uh, the first one of these I did, I fitted all the speakers and I fitted a DCC chip and then I did the soldering. I would advise not doing that because you're soldering directly over the motor and um, so you can you can get all the lengths of the wires and stuff correct before you do that actually next step is we're just going to put some black tape over the motor so cut some black tape probably about on an inch and a half or three centimeters depending on how you look at these things and what you want to avoid you don't want to put black tape over the grooves where the body shell goes down so put it before and after the grooves. And you can put it over the PCB a little bit as well, it won't, it won't hurt it. 
and literally what we're doing here is setting up a base for the speakers to sit on so that they're not just kind of dangling over the motor so there's one and we'll put another strip uh, on the other side of the lugs There we go. That's pretty okay. Bear in mind you might have some bundles of wires and stuff here as well, and that's okay too. The shell, as long as the body shell will go down past the black tape, you're okay. Nice and neat. Also, I'm not sure if you need to, but I just in my head it makes sense. Um to leave a gap. Here, apart from the body grooves, leave a gap so that if there's heat from the motor or something like that, it can get out. You don't want to cover the whole thing completely. Okay, yep, that's good. Also, at the front, it doesn't matter that these wires are sticking up. You're not going to push the speaker right in against this black because otherwise it'll catch the first lug on the body shell. So it doesn't have to be flush against the back of the, the cab driver's seat, if you like. Okay, speaker time. So we have to decide on how long our wire is going to be because you can leave all the wires intact if you want, but you'll have wires everywhere. So it's as handy to trim them down. Your DCC chip is going to sit roughly here. So you can kind of put these down on the board along roughly where they're going to be. And we need our speakers. The mega bass speaker is going to sit forward um, and then we're going to just push the wire against the back of it like that so it's going to sit around there and then like these wires will reach up and around so it's going to sit about there and then the sugar cube is going to sit right beside it like that up against it so these wires don't need to be as long so we're going to cut these Like that, roughly, you know, that long. And um, those wires about two inches long, or four centimeters. And then the same, the sugar cube is going to go there. We'll cut them there. Okay, so your sugar cube kind of looks like that. Again, bear in mind you have wires already coming from the uh, what they call the VCC chip, so you have a bit of play here. Now these are nice and thin, these wires, so you're, we've got to strip them back as well. Okay, so be very delicate again. Everything with this look was delicate. see the sugar cube and the DCC chip have brown wires and the mega bass speaker has black and red it doesn't really matter you don't have to match up any colors or anything like that you do need to do you do need to solder them in in parallel so that the power is going to each speaker each speaker here is 8 ohms resistance so when you put them in parallel like that you add them together and you actually divide by two, so you'll get four ohms resistance. And I think these chips handle four to eight ohms resistance. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just you need to pay attention when you're buying the speakers. Don't buy two fours and wire them in series because the resistance will actually be, or the impedance will be two, which will let too much current go through this and it'll blow it. So we have these peeled back. Oh yeah, we should do the chip as well. So the wires on the chip, I'm going to twist them and we're going to tin them separately with the solder. So twist them around a bit. 
whereas the wires on the speakers, we're going to twist them together and then tin them because then you'll have you'll be trying to solder two wires together instead of three, which is always easier. So give them a nice good twist. Like that. And if we have a little bit sticking off the end of one of them, let's chop it off. Again, the neater you make them, the easier life will be, so it's as well to spend a few extra minutes doing this. You can also, if your fingers are not up to it, you can use your little pliers here to just grab the ends and twist them with that if you want. Okie dokie. So this is the way they are going to sit in the loco, like that. Again, hard to see, everything is small and dark here, so. So the wires for the sugar cube, the sugar cube is exactly 20 by 20 millimeters and the space inside the chassis is 20 millimeters. So you can't put the wires sticking out onto the body shelf, but you can turn it like that so that the wires are going in towards the other sugar cube speaker and the black tap, the black tack will keep them together. So a bit of tinning now. Grab your flux. little piece on each wire some people hate soldering some people love it I love it so if you don't like soldering there's not much soldering in this so that's good First rule of soldering, keep your tip clean. Try not to drop solder onto the computer chip. A little bit of solder on the tip. This is hard to video, so apologies if you can't see it right. And you're literally just touching the solder onto the flux, and then your wires will be nice and silvery. Um, it just makes soldering the wires together much easier. There we go. Okay, so they're gonna sit like that. Okay, so just so you can see. We have one of each wire soldered together like this. And now we're going to solder them to the chip. And uh, do you know what's handy to do at this point is just grab a bit of tape and the, the speakers are magnetic so they try and force each other away which makes it awkward to try and get the wires so just grab a bit of tape. Them down to your mat so they can't move. There we go. Now they won't move when we're trying to solder them. I'm just bending the wires into the position to make it as easy as possible. So, another tiny bit of flux. You may or may not need it, but I find it just makes things a bit easier. A little bit of solder. A 
you need you only need tiny amounts these wires are very thin so you don't need too much at all and now we're going to break those apart again don't do what I just did before you solder the two sets of wires together you need to put your heat shrink tubing on first so grab a bit of heat shrink and you can use if you don't want to use heat shrink you can use black tape to go around the connection when it's done I just prefer using heat shrink chop off two bits about a centimeter each or three quarters of an inch or thereabouts Slip the heat shrink over the wire. Yeah, go again. Always be aware of what's underneath your soldering iron when you're soldering, in case anything drips. Okay, grab our wire, one done, and Done. I think a good connection. Not a great connection. If you're um, concerned about the connection, just give it a just try and pull it apart, and if it comes away easily, there we go. If it comes away easily, you might as well break the connection now as opposed to taking the low pull apart again to find a, a fault. Now at this point you can you know put them in and test them out before you put the heat shrink on. Um, if you're feeling confident, you can do the heat shrink now, which I am. So we'll take it. We'll take a chance. And when you're doing your heat shrink, just put the heat shrink over the connection. Uh, again, this is tricky to see, but I'll try and show you. There's our connections, put the heat shrink over the solder and then just use your soldering iron just to heat up the heat shrink a little bit. And as the name suggests, it'll shrink down over the soldering joint and insulate it. Again, be aware of when you're doing this, don't use the tip because it'll destroy the tip, it'll cover it in rubber. Use like the, the body or the shaft of the soldering iron, but when you're doing it, be aware of where the tip is so you don't burn through something else. Do -do. And there we go. So you should end up with something like this. And there's two nice heat shrink joints. So, uh, last step now. Um, first thing we're gonna do is put a little bit of black tack along here and push our mega base speaker into it and it'll hold it in place. Then we'll put a bit of black tack on the mega base speaker and push the sugar cube into it and it'll hold that in place and then we're going to put our DCC chip in and connect it. So black tack, just take a little strip of it, like literally half a centimetre is all you need. I haven't actually used this before a few weeks ago. and. Um, I started doing all this speaker stuff it was recommended so I was like sure we'll give it a go and it's brilliant stuff 
Anywhere you use blue tack, you can use this, only it's even better. So you can see the tiny little bit that I'm going to use here, it doesn't take much at all. Very sticky. There we go. You can see I've just put it just along here. Bring in our mega base and push it in against it. Just enough to hold it, you don't need to glue it to it like. And then we're going to get another little bit. And put it against the mega base. So the mega base speaker is back against it here like this. We're going to put we're going to push it in like that and put another blob of it on this end of the mega base. push the sugar cube against that. Try and bring the mega base wires up and over the sugar cube. You can't put them on the side because the body shell will catch them. There we go. And get another little bit. the other little bit on this side of the sugar cube just to hold it all in place. I'm going to push that in there and put this against here. And there we go. I'll show you what we have now. So we have a little strip running along here. We have a little bit in between the two of them, and then we have a little blob of it down here just holding everything in place. Now we need to put in our chip. Uh, we need to take off the blanket plate here. And this is fiddly, so be careful. There we go. And we need to put in our chip. Uh, lining up one of the pins, which is the odd one out. Make sure it's lined up before you push down. Yep. And then push down on both sides. Bump. Clicks into place. There you go. Last thing I'm going to do is just put a tiny little tape around those two just to be neat and tidy. less random wires you have roving around inside your loco, the better. There we go. And then we just kind of push this down into the black tack, so it'll sit down there nicely. Push it in from the sides, as I said again, so that it's not um, getting in the way of the body shot. Try not to break the wires when you're doing this. That won't help. And there we go. Nice and neat. Hope you can see this. Uh, it's actually very tricky filming when there's a circuit board exposed. It keeps shining off it. And now the moment of truth is will the body shell fit back over it? So sit it down, pull out the railings a little bit so that they go around, make sure it's not catching on the other side. Line up the slots, push down the cab first. The cab is down, push down the body. Hey hey. 
<laughs> That's the bit where it can all go wrong. And then just slot the other body, or sorry, the other cab back into place. Click. Get your little pliers. If you have bad eyesight, this is where you need your glasses or a magnifying glass or whatever works for you. I'm not at that stage yet, thankfully. Yeah, they're all back in place. Again, I'll give the local another little clean later. Okay, time to put on the layer. Okay, here we go. All I've done is programmer number. Hey, that's a good sign anyway. Oh, nice. Nice, successful test. Thanks for watching.